anyway, when Johnny re retired from the water department, he was able to, I guess, reciprocate some of these offers, and they wanted to bring him back to Milltown, and he was staying at the Tatra Hotel, and I knew Johnny was in town, so I had to see Johnny, and uh, I'd been playing with Johnny McGreevy since I was, oh, eight or nine years old, and here I was, about 20 years old, and it, in Ireland, and I knew Johnny was on the premises, and but somehow, I couldn't get to Johnny, and it took me a while to get up near him because he was in this an inner circle of musicians <laughs> that were like the elders, and they were in the Central Hotel, and there was a little lounge in the Central Hotel, mm -hmm. and that was like the inner lounge, <laughs> and the door would be guarded by one of the two twin sisters. Like the outer door of the bar, in general, would have one of the twin sisters, and the inner door would have another twin sister. <laughs> and I knew Johnny would be in there because they're the older teacher musicians and musicians just for the concert and whatnot and because there were the elder statesmen of, and, and, and women of the of the art form but anyway they would be housed there and they there was this inner session and the door would open and i would see johnny say hey johnny who are you and say, johnny come on in here come on in here. so that everyone was trying to get into the inner sanctum and johnny was he would one of the few people that could call me johnny uh so he would be waving me in but there'd be no seats so uh, and the, one of the sisters would say, no, you, you can't go in there, you can't go in there. I'm like, my, my friend just invited me in there. And who do you think you are? And show them and explain and, and fill out an application to get into the <laughs> And uh, then I stick my head in the next time the door opened and, and uh, no seats. But it, uh, eventually a seat would open up and I would wait outside listening by the door for, and uh, probably, two hours and 15 minutes because I knew there, a seat would open up at some point. <laughs> but uh, around that time, a, a good friend of mine, Tim Breton, had seen me there and uh, Tim was there and we were having a bottle of beer at the, at the bar and uh, of course Tim had no idea there was an inner sanctum session going on. He said, you want to have some tunes? And I'm like, I would help, love to have some tunes with you anytime, Timmy, but there, we're waiting. This is like a trying to get on a on board a flight that's overbooked. <laughs> I, I'm in a holding pattern here, and and Johnny's in there, and Tim's like, "Oh, well, that's great. I'll wait with you." And I'm thinking, oh, now there's going to be two. <laughs> <laughs> I eventually, I think it was Kevin Taylor, Patty Taylor's son, back from uh, England, got up, and, and there was a seat that was open, and another seat became open, and, and the the lady guarding the door kind of. Uh, begrudgingly let us in because we were being waved in by Johnny mm -hmm. and Johnny was playing with all the kind of the white shirt musicians and they were and, and a lot of them were working men but when they came to a festival you'd swear they were executives but in, in, in the uh, in the inner sanctum there was there was PJ Hayes Bobby Casey old John Kelly down from Dublin uh, Joe Ryan and uh, there was a lull in the session, and, and Johnny McGreevy was right in there with them. And these all the average age would would have been like seventy eight years old at the time, and they were all playing at really at their peak. They were all great players, and uh, so Timmy and I got in, and of course Timmy at the time had long hair like Jesus and sandals on, and it, Timmy's a great piper, and John Kelly was kind of uh, had a way and a reputation for sussing out people very quickly because he, he ran. He ran the scene up in Dublin, didn't he? Slattery's and so yeah, John John Kelly would kind of say to Tim, saying, "Oh yeah, where are you from?" And Tim's like, uh, "I'm from Philadelphia, but I live in Iowa now." And uh, that was the first. And John <laughs> Kelly kind of slips, kind of like, "Let's see." And then the next question is like, uh, and, "And who made your pipes?" And that's a very like if. In Willy Week, if someone asks you who made your pipes, that's almost like presenting your birth certificate. You know? <laughs> and, and Timmy said, I made my pipes when I was 15 years old in a, in a high school workshop class. And you could see that the old fellows kind of take a step back, like, <laughs> in which one has arrived, you know. <laughs> you know? Anyway, we got playing with the, the old guys, but they, they, for some reason, they didn't want to, uh, there was a lull in the session, and they, PJ Hayes kind of said to me, Oh no, we, we won't play that. There was a particular tune, types of tunes. We won't play that until Lar Gavin shows up. And I'm like, Who, who's Lar Gavin? But as just as Owen was talking about Jackie Daly, for our generation in Milltown, Melbourne, very recorded, well-known Cork box player, 
Lar Gavin was largely unrecorded, but well, well in with the lads, and he would have been one of the youngest of the old lads set, and he came over from Tipperary with a beautiful gray Paul Soprani, and uh, I was amazed. Uh, you know, I'd learned a lot as a musician watching how Jackie Daly ran a session, and uh, I was often just listening and recording, and then the way Lar Gavin ran the session, and uh, they had tremendous respect. As Lar Gavin had all the tunes of uh, Ed Reavy, Sean Ryan, and Patty O'Brien. And uh, all those guys, they didn't really want to play, maybe it was late in the week, they played all the Junior Cretan tunes and they wanted to play the, the kind of melodic, uh, different sorts of tunes. Anyway, this is a tune called Larry Gavin's Favorite, written by Patty O'Brien for this player, Larry Gavin. And uh, he was uh, he was into the horses, uh, so he was uh, kind of a, kind of a well-off musician, but uh, a number of tunes were written for like, there was a tune Patty O'Brien wrote for Larry Gavin's horse called the Jostler, and the uh, Jostler would always be running in the, in the but this is one called Larry Gavin's Favorite, and I heard it from that group, uh, Fisher Street, years ago, John McMahon yeah. and that probably never played much on Fisher Street, but they named their band Fisher Street. <laughs> <laughs> Fisher Street's the road that O'Connor's pub is on, yeah. right. do it.